chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again we shall take up the perimeter area of parallelograms and quadrilaterals we shall be discussing various aspects the various ways in which we can write the area of a parallelogram but right now let us see what is the formula for the perimeter of a parallelogram let us suppose this is a parallelogram with the length of sides as a and b then we know that this side is a the opposite side will also be a and if this side is b then the opposite side will also be b the perimeter is sum total of the length of the boundary of a figure so in very basic and simple terms we can say that the perimeter of this parallelogram will be the sum of all the four sides of the parallelogram that we can see is a plus b plus a plus b that we can simply group and write as 2 into a plus b this is the formula that we use for the perimeter of a parallelogram let us move on to our next formula this is an important theorem which is required for conceptual clarity and these theorems they help us develop a lot of reasoning skills also that is more important parallelograms between the same parallels and on the same base have different perimeters but equal areas let us suppose this is a parallelogram a b c d and this is another parallelogram let us label it as p p b c q these two parallelograms are on the same base bc as we can see bc is common to both the parallelograms and they are in the same parallels because this line this line that you are seeing is parallel to the base bc and the second parallelogram that is p b c q this parallelogram is also lying on the same parallel line that holds ad and pq so if we extend this parallel line like this then we can see that both the parallelograms are within the same parallels like this this is the parallel for the base and this is the parallel for the other side and both the parallelograms are on the same base and between the same parallels let us suppose the length of this side of this parallelogram ab is a and since this is a this length will also be a the property of the parallelogram that opposite sides are equal so this edge and this edge are equal another thing this line bp is parallel to cq and since bp is parallel to cq we can see this line aq as a transversal for this line and this line because it is a transversal the corresponding angles these angles will have to be equal and again if you see ab is parallel to cd these two lines are parallel to each other and if again the same transversal is seen then this angle is equal to this angle we can tick them 
and we can tick this and let me tick this one also now we can assert that the triangle a b p and back to a this triangle is congruent to this triangle d c q back to d these two are congruent because two angles this angle corresponding angle this corresponding angle and one side this a is equal so we can write triangle a b p is congruent to triangle d c q the reason we can write is angle angle side rule now as a layman you can see that if this part of the area is equal to this part of the area then both these parallelograms have same area because this part is less in the dotted parallelogram and this part again is compensated on this side for the dotted parallelogram so both the parallelograms have the same area but we can put it in a more mathematical way also so let us see how we write we can write area a b c d is equal to area a b p plus area p b c d we can split the a b c d parallelogram into this triangle and this trapezium like like figure this is what we have done here and we can write it is equal to now area abp is known to be equal to this area dcq so we will write it is equal to area dcq plus area pbcd which is equal to now this trapezium like figure has been retained as pbcd to this if you add dcq then we get the area of the dotted parallelogram so we can write which is equal to area pbcq which proves the assertion so both the parallelograms have been proven to have the same area again i am saying why i am stressing on proving these things because you should have a genuine ground understanding of geometry it comes very useful in solving the problems that are asked in your paper otherwise i could have simply stated the theorem and moved on the whole point is to give you a greater understanding the second thing we need to consider is the perimeters even though the area of this parallelogram yellow parallelogram is same as the area of the dotted parallelogram the perimeters are not equal you can see that this side bc is common therefore the pq will also be equal there is no problem on perimeter as far as side bc is concerned but the problem comes with the side bp bp is different from ab bp is not equal to ab so the perimeters of these two parallelograms are different we can write since since pb is not equal to ab perimeters perimeters are different let us move further 
prove that the area of a parallelogram is equal to the product of its base and height. Now this is quite an important theorem that is the formula for the area of a parallelogram. Let us suppose the base of this parallelogram is of length b and the height of this parallelogram is h that is the height between the distance between these two parallel sides. This is the height I am talking about. So we have to prove that the area of this parallelogram is equal to the product of its base and height. For this we will have to do a small construction on this figure. I have kept the base same and created a rectangle on this base and let the height of this rectangle be h and we can see that the rectangle and the given parallelogram are both parallelograms between the same parallels. So we can note the rectangle the rectangle and the parallelogram and the parallelogram small mistake in typing no problem the rectangle and the parallelogram are in the same parallels and they are on the same base also they are on the same base also therefore area of parallelogram is equal to area of rectangle their areas have to be same which is equal to the area of rectangle is by definition the product of the base and the height of the rectangle which is equal to b into h. This is the simple proof of the fact that the area of parallelogram is equal to the product of the base and the height of the parallelogram. Let us move further now. How to find the area of a parallelogram if both the sides and a diagonal are known? Let us suppose this is a parallelogram in which one side is B, the other side is A, B and A are known. We do not have any knowledge about the height of this parallelogram. But instead of the height, we know the length of the diagonal. If the height were known to us, we would have simply used the formula base into height. But height is not known. So in this case, instead of the height, we are given the diagonal of this parallelogram. So we have to determine the area of this parallelogram. Let us label this parallelogram as A, B, C and D. And let me label, uh, before I label I show you that this parallelogram is split into two congruent triangles by this diagonal. So this upper part, this triangle 1 is exactly congruent to the lower triangle 2. Because these two triangles are congruent to each other, they have the same area. We can write one of the things that is available is that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle BCD this is a property of every parallelogram that the diagonal splits a 
parallelogram into two congruent triangles. I have proved this already in geometry for you. So I will be able to determine the area of the parallelogram if I am able to determine the area of one of these two triangles as simple as that. So we can write area of A, B, C, D is equal to 2 times the area B, C, D. So our problem now reduces to finding out the area of the triangle BCD which can be found out by using Heron's formula. So write use Heron's formula because three sides are are known. So you should follow this strategy for finding out the area of parallelogram. If the diagonal and two sides are known, you should not get confused that I have been given diagonal and two sides, how I will be able to find out the area of the complete parallelogram. The only thing is to see the figure as two congruent triangles which can be solved easily. I have seen questions in the previous papers based on this requirement. Let us move on to our next property. How to find the area of a parallelogram if both the sides and the included angle is known? Let us suppose this is a parallelogram with sides A and B. Now we do not know the height of the parallelogram. We do not know the diagonal. But instead of that, we know the angle that is contained between the two sides of this parallelogram. So if I label this as A, B, C, and D. Then as I have already discussed the area of ABCD is equal to 2 times the area of triangle BCD. This we have already discussed. Now in the previous part we knew the diagonal so Heron's formula helped us. But in this case we know the two sides and the included angle. So what we have to use is the sine formula for finding the area of the lower triangle BCD. And once we know its area we will multiply it by 2 to obtain the area of the entire parallelogram. So we can write which is equal to 2 times half of a b sin theta. The area of a triangle is half of a b into sin theta. So which becomes equal to a b sin theta. This two and this two have cancelled out. This is another formula for the area of a parallelogram for which the sides and the included angle is known. Let us move to our next formula. This is another important story from exam point of view. The ratio of the sides of a parallelogram is same as the ratio of its two perpendiculars. Let me first of all explain what the whole problem is. Let us suppose this yellow is a parallelogram and the side is B and this side is A. And let us also suppose 
that this height is h and this height is p. We have to find out a relation between a, b, h and p. At first sight, it might look a bit difficult. Let me also clearly put that these are perpendiculars. These are perpendiculars. Can you see that it is possible? Let me show you. The parallel area of parallelogram, the area of parallelogram is equal to base into height. This we have already derived and if we just tilt the parallelogram then we can see that A is the base and if A is the base then this P will be the height for that base. Just tilting the parallelogram, rotating the parallelogram or rotating yourself. So we can see that should be equal to should also equal it should also be equal to A into P which implies B H is equal to A P which implies B by A is equal to P by H. So the ratio of two sides of a parallelogram is same as the ratio of the perpendiculars. This is the side B. Then the numerator will be the other perpendicular. And if this is the side A in the denominator, the denominator will be the other perpendicular. There have been many many questions in your previous years which are based on this formula. But I don't suggest you to remember this formula because remembering becomes a little bit of problematic also. It is best to just draw a small figure just in time and just label the things out and you will be able to find the answer just in time instead of remembering the formula. Let us move further now. Area of a quadrilateral is half the product. Okay, this is for a general quadrilateral, not just to a parallelogram. Even though a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, but this formula applies to every quadrilateral. Is half of the product of the diagonals and the sine of the angle of their inclination. This means that if the length of this diagonal is D1. The complete length from this vertex to the opposite vertex. And the length of this diagonal is D2. From this vertex to the other vertex. If the lengths of the diagonals are known. And also is known the angle of inclination of the two diagonals. It could be any angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. This will be vertically opposite. This will be supplementary. An option is there. Out of these four possibilities, if you know any angle theta, then the area of this quadrilateral is written by the formula half into D1 into D2 into sine of theta. It is possible to prove this formula but I will not go into the details. The proof will be by taking these four triangles and writing the formula for the area of each triangle by using the sine formula. When you add up all of them, a lot many cancellations will take place and you will be left with this formula that is 
half of the product of the diagonals and the sine of the angle between them. Let us move to our next formula. Area of a square and rhombus in terms of its diagonals. Now we know that that for square and rhombus the diagonals intersect intersect at right angles so if the diagonals are of length d1 and d2 and they are both mutually equal also for a parallelogram they are equal so for square and rhombus they will be equal so if we write diagonals are diagonals are of length d each then the area will be half of the product of the lengths of the two diagonals into sine of 90 degrees which gives me d square by 2 as the formula. So if the length of the diagonal of a square or a rhombus is known then the area will be d square by 2. This formula I have seen in a number of previous years papers and I have also seen that a knowledge of this formula it saves a lot of time. A shortcut method appears at that time. I will show you when I go to the solved questions but you should keep this formula in mind. Let us move further. The area of a quadrilateral is equal to, this is again for any quadrilateral, half of the length of a diagonal and the sum of perpendiculars drawn on it. Let us suppose this is a quadrilateral ABCD, any quadrilateral and this is a diagonal BD. And its length, let us suppose the length is D and the perpendicular from the vertex A to this diagonal, let us call that perpendicular as H1 and similarly the perpendicular from the vertex C on the same diagonal be called H2. Then the area of this quadrilateral is given by area is equal to half of the length of the diagonal which is D into the sum of the heights of the perpendiculars drawn on the diagonal. This is the formula but it can be proved easily. You can see that this upper triangle is there. Its area is half of base into height. The lower triangle with the same base and height H2. When you add them, this D will come out common and H1 and H2 will be added to obtain the formula. In case you do not want to remember this formula, you can derive it just in time also and this is for your knowledge. I'll close it right now. Thank you.